Resuming debate, the Honorable Member for Vancouver, Quadra. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I'm also uh, pleased to support this, uh, this opposition motion by the, uh, by the NDP uh, to restore the Kitts Coast Guard base and the other cuts, the, uh, the marine uh, communication centers, the other very important network of safety and service in the Vancouver area. And what we're seeing here today uh, in this debate uh, was really exemplified by the member from West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Ski Sea to Sky Country, where he had so many fine words about the measures that gov this government is taking, and yet in an Orwellian way, they are simply a, were a smokescreen for the fact that this government's cuts to service and to budgets have actually reduced safety of the environment of, and of the people on the coast. So I am disappointed that the member who should be listening to the concerns of the citizens in his community with their very important uh, beaches and, uh, and uh, fisheries, shellfish, uh, crabbing, uh, tourism, that he is not listening to his constituents and instead is uh, defending undefendable, indefensible actions on the part of this government. This government has promoted the myth that the health and safety of Canadians is the government's number one priority. And that is but a myth, unfortunately. The reality is that the health and safety of Canadians and the environment are being sacrificed on the altar of 2015 election tax breaks to the 15% of families, the wealthiest families, who need it the least. So that is the reality. When the member from West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Sea to Sky Country said that he wants to take the discussion to 30,000 feet, what actually happened with this oil spill is that surveillance, air surveillance came out hours before anything happened on the water. And that's where we need to take this discussion, is right onto the ground, onto the water. What are the cuts that this government has applied? And what are the consequences of applying those cuts? There have been cuts and clawbacks to many of the agencies that are to serve the safety and security of Canadians and British Columbians. Cuts to RCMPs, operations on streets to keep Canadians safe from organized crime, from drug, uh, drug activities and gangs. Uh, many of the, the, the kind of uh, activities that have led to missing and murdered Indigenous women, uh, those are the very kinds of programs that are intended to protect the safety of Canadians that have been cut. Defense is a whole other matter in which the government as the myth that they are increasing funding to defense when in fact they've cut the funding to defense substantially in order to offer these tax breaks. Veterans, over a billion dollars clawed back from the Veterans Affairs budget, over a billion dollars while veterans were crying out for services, standing in lineups, not able to speak to a human being, having 1-800 numbers when they're in crisis with a, a, a mental injury like PTSD. So cuts to the very programs that s support the safety and the health of Canadians is the hallmark of this government. And marine safety has seen a major, major cuts from $82 million for the marine safety program in the Transport Canada in 2007, cut to $57.5 million. That's a 37% drop. So that's $57.5 million uh, by 2015. And in the meanwhile, the government claims that they are protecting the services and safety of Canadians. That is nonsense. They are risking the services and the safety of Canadians. And this oil spill in Vancouver Harbour is an example of the consequences of that. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my riding of Vancouver Quadra, which is proud to be the home of the Kitsilano Yacht Club the Royal Vancouver Yacht Club, and the Jericho Sailing Centre, and many more recreational facilities where 
Vancouver's mariners come uh, to bring their crafts of all types and sizes and, and uh, carry out their recreation and their exercise, whether paddle boards or, or kayaks or uh, sailboards, uh, on the waters of Vancouver Harbour. The constituents of Vancouver Quadra were very clear at the time the Coast Guard announcement to shut down the Kitsilano Coast Guard. When that announcement was made, there was an uproar uh, in Vancouver amongst my constituents and actually right across the region. And this government ignored that. In fact, we have the, the uh, parliamentary secretary uh, to the Minister of Fisheries at the time doing similar to what the Conservatives are doing today, a laundry list of supposed investments to actually cover the fact that they were cutting funding for these very important safety uh, measures. And in his, a letter to one of the key search and rescue volunteers in our city, Mr. Mike Cotter, who runs the Jericho Sailing Centre, in response to Mr. Cotter's response, uh, concerns, uh, the MP from Pitt Meadows Maple Ridge Mission stated, Coast Guard officials have done an extensive analysis of Kitsilano's historical workload, etc., and we are confident that the reshaped search and rescue system in place next year, working collectively, will maintain the high level of service currently provided. Well, that is absolute balderdash, because we have had incidents already of slow response time that were at the risk of human life, and now we have the incidence of slow response time that has costed our marine ecosystem, our tourism, potentially the health of children on our beaches, and has been an example of a complete and utter failure on the part of this Coast Guard's response. I'm going to just read a letter from Mr. Cotter, because my, one of my key concerns here is that while the Liberal leader's response to this Vancouver fuel spill from the Mar Maranatha vessel, Marathasa vessel, was to say, we must protect the health and safety of the environment and British Columbians, and so therefore we will restore, the Liberals will restore the, the full service Coast Guard base in Vancouver and the other marine safety cuts will be built back. That was the Liberal response. What was the Conservatives' response? Well, the Minister was standing up saying things that were absolutely not true. And that's my deepest concern, that this government and its ministers cannot be counted on to tell the truth to Canadians. So Mr. Cotter brought it on himself to write and explain just exactly how the minister was incorrect. And this letter, his letter to, to Minister Moore uh, reads thus, since the April 8th Bunker Sea fuel spill in English Bay, three kilometers directly north of Jer Jericho Sailing Center, I've heard various reports from the Canadian Coast Guard officials and the minister, I will add, stating that the Kitts Coast, Coast Guard station was not equipped with pollution response equipment. I know this not to be true, he goes on, having been familiarized with the station, having witnessed their environmental response to several incidents over the 25 years I managed the Jericho Sailing Center while the Kitts Station was open between 1988 and 2013. And then Mr. Cotter goes on to enclose photos of the very pollution response vessel that was based at the station that the minister and the current Coast Guard leadership is claiming would not have been av available even if the station were open. So this is falsehoods to cover the impact of their cuts and the resulting ineffectiveness of response. So I find that hugely concerning that we have a minister up there trying to cover up with inaccurate information what actually happened. And Mr. Speaker, at least our constituents deserve an apology from this minister, and they de deserve the truth about this uh, failure on the part of the Conservative government and the Kitts Coast Guard uh, to maintain their health and safety concerns as a key priority. Thank you. Uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Esquimalt, uh, pardon me, uh, Skeena Pulkley Valley. Very much. 
Minister, I, uh, I'll take it as a compliment. Uh, can you excuse me with my colleague from Esquimalt. The, I'd, I'd like to thank my friend from Vancouver for her comments. The, the, the question I have for her is that does this not represent, a, in a sense, a wake-up call, not only for the people in the immediate area, the lower mainland, Vancouver, because what happened, in the, the bunker fuel that leaked out of this ship, and the, uh, it, it's almost impossible to believe how, how little coordination, how little urgency there was on behalf of the federal government to this, that the proposed plans to actually twin and double, essentially, the amount of uh, diluted bitumen going through the port in Vancouver, the, the Kinder Morgan project, that if, 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 a, if a spill of any significant size uh, were to occur, because the Conservatives are pushing this, they are, they are rapidly pushing both Kinder Morgan, Northern Gateway, and some of these other uh, more perilous projects, that if this was the response to this uh, order of magnitude spill, what does it tell the people of British Columbia and Canada more broadly about the Conservative government's attention to the importance of protecting things like our marine ecosystem and the economies and the environment that depend upon it? Thank you. Member for Vancouver Quadra. Well, I thank my, the member from Skeena Bulky Valley for that question. And the answer is that it tells the people of Canada and British Columbia that the Conservative government cannot be trusted to tell the truth and that the marine response provisions are completely and woefully inadequate to deal with a spill of this size or any other size. And, and I'll, I'll uh, note that according to the chronology of what happened here, the booms, containment boom around the ship did not happen, was not in place until 4.30 in the morning. That's almost, tw that's almost 12 hours after the, the mariners first call in this, this problem. In contrast, had the Coast Guard still been open, according to uh, Mr. Cotter, the pollution response vehicle would have been on the scene and commenced spill containment within an hour of the report. And the Osprey and her crew, which is another uh, ship that was at the Coast Guard station, which is adept at controlling smaller spills, would have commenced cleanup operations immediately. So the suggestion by the Canadian Coast Guard management and the minister that the Kitts Coast Guard station would not have made a difference from the, from the containment 12 hours later after two tidal flow changes is beyond believable and simply not credible, says Mr. Cotter. And I want to go back to my concern that the lack of trust that we can have in this government is a, a key concern and should be a key concern for all Canadians. Uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Malpec. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my uh, colleague from uh, Vancouver for her uh, her remarks, uh, and uh, thank uh, for the uh, the motion before the House today, Mr. Speaker. This is a serious issue, uh, and uh, my colleague outlined some of the seriousness related to the oil spill in Vancouver, but this is just not a one-off situation. Uh, I met with uh, people on the weekend, actually, who uh, work for the Coast Guard, and they're concerned about the cutbacks on the on the East Coast. Uh, and what we really have is the government failing, this Conservative government, failing marine, mariners uh, everywhere with uh, cutbacks relative to the Coast Guard, uh, failing communities who could face uh, oil spills and human, human safety concerns as a result. And I have to ask my honourable colleague, what does she think the reason for the government doing these cutbacks that are affecting public safety and affecting the environment in relation to the ability of the Canadian Coast Guard to do, it, do its job, is it just simply so they can save money in that area, putting people at risk, so they can just give tax breaks to the most wealthy in the country? The Honourable Member for Vancouver, Quadra. Thank you, and thanks to my colleague from uh, Melpec. And I just want to confirm his comments about the cuts to uh, marine data and research, and Peter Ross, who's the director of Vancouver Aquarium's Ocean Pollution Research Program, said there is no long-term, no cohesive long-term monitoring of British Columbia's coastal ecosystems. It's a major gap in research and preparedness because of federal cuts to science programs, he said. And the lack of baseline data makes it difficult to, for scientists to assess the spill's imp impact. And I'll I quote, we, we think there is a gap in terms of our capacity to understand the ocean, document our impact, 
on the ocean, and it renders very, very difficult our ability to protect the oceans, said this director. And this is right across the country. What is the reason for this, this egregious cuts to very important research? And it's just as my colleague from Alpac said, it is to be able to offer tax breaks to the families who need it the least, the 15% of wealthiest families that this government will be providing with a tax break, shamefully.